In this video, we will create cinematic AI videos with consistent characters using Kling AI's new custom model. First, let's watch the AI film. What did he do? He's um, an old customs agent who stole $2 million. How did the agents know he was here? He didn't. She did. You, you know who I'm talking about, right? You mean the witch? Yeah, the, the new psychic unit of uh, remote viewers. One of them in particular, I don't know how she does it. The whole intelligence unit thought he'll escape to Greece by boat. He rented one and they tracked the paperwork. Apparently, he's been sailing his whole life. And she said he's hiding in cars in Turkey? Exactly. That's so random. Every other psychic said Greece. She was the only one who said Turkey. And that's not even the craziest part. What do you mean? She got super specific. His hotel is next to an old graveyard. There's a park nearby. The ground is covered in a meter of snow. He's the only guest at the hotel. No way. Yeah, but the, she gets no credit, of course. Uh, all the praise will go to the uh, intelligence chief. Who is she anyway? Rumor is she used to be an intelligence analyst, volunteer for the psychic program, and pass all the tests in record time, while others use automatic writing or sketch with their pencils in receptive state. She draws over water with a special ink. Apparently, this improves results. Throughout my life, I had strong intuition. Some say it's an ancient capability, a survival mechanism. Shamans were using it too. It's now a forgotten skill or we have a blockage. Remote viewing is like drawing over a constantly changing liquid surface. You need to clear your head and let yourself go. Sensory deprivation is essential. To heighten your psychic abilities, you must minimize external stimuli and focus your mind. In this state, you can locate people or objects across vast distances, even reaching into the past and, if you're advanced enough, into the future. After years of training, I remember my first job. They just gave me a latitude and longitude as a blind target. I had an out-of-body experience. Find building with razor fences. Inside the building, enter the hall. Third door on the left. Find the file cabinet. Second drawer. First file. I found documents about a fusion-based autonomous underwater drone called Medusa, and I woke myself up. I briefed my intelligence manager about what I saw. They interrogated me for hours, asked me about books I read recently and how do I know details of this underwater drone. Then I understood what I remote viewed was our own facility and it was a real project. I don't exactly know how this works. I suspect Brain is a room temperature quantum computer engaging in quantum biology processes that enable phenomena like precognition and intuition. Similar to how entangled photons can influence each other across time, perhaps our brains utilize principles of quantum mechanics. While remote viewing, the act of observing collapses the wave function, causing a particle in superposition to become either one or zero. Quantum entanglement connects these states, possibly creating visions or hallucinations as part of the biological quantum computing process. If the brain can maintain quantum coherence, it might access future knowledge states and send information back in time, similar to how quantum computers are theorized to operate. Then one day, I've got assigned to another target. In the 
first part, I will show you how to train a custom model in Clink AI to create consistent characters. We'll explore how to change our characters' outfits using Clink. Next, I will demonstrate an alternative approach for creating consistent characters using FreePick, and we'll analyze how the character's consistency compares. We'll compare Clink's lip-syncing capabilities with Runway Act 1. At the end of the video, I will show you a new tool for creating natural-sounding multi-character dialogue scenes. We will finalize tutorial by expanding your video from horizontal to vertical or vice versa to repurpose our AI films for different platforms like Reels or Shorts format. Let's jump into the tutorial. As a first thing, we will create a custom model or Clink LoRa using Clink AI's new custom model option. You will find that option on the left side. In order to use custom model, you need to have a subscription. And after clicking that, it will ask you to basically give you some instructions and use the tool responsibly. So we agree to that. And you will see we need a couple of videos for our characters. It should be like frontal face videos, 5 or 15 seconds, 1080p, both landscape or portrait, depending on your preference. And there are some instructions here that it shouldn't be a face covering, the lightning should be right, it shouldn't be a blur, face shouldn't be too small. And this brings us to a character design process. For the main character you saw on the video, I started first with a single image. I thought this would be a good match for a psychic character. For iteration process, I use Flux Redux, which is part of new Flux Tools family recently released by Black Forest Labs. An advantage of Flux Redux is, based on a single image, it creates multiple images resembling the original image. You will realize that it's not perfectly exactly the same, but it will allow you to see some iterations and alternatives that you can use. I like these first two images, even though character's face is not fully visible. And to solve this problem, I use Free Pick Retouch. By this way, I'm also demonstrating you how you can use in painting. And after selecting this part of the face, we will get rid of the hair and our character's face will be fully visible. Then I pick Pro Mode, which actually uses a new Flux Fill tool. The Flux Fill is part of the Expand and In Painting, again recently released by Black Forest Lab. After selecting this, I hit Retouch. And then it cleans up this part of the face for me. So now I can use this character design for generating some synthetic data for Kling AI's custom model. Just as a quick reminder that for using Flux in painting, you don't need to use free pick only. You can also use fall.ai or replicate. I won't show you details of that, but simply you need to choose your image. Then you need to create a mask, which is you need to select the part of the face. And then you can write a prompt like fully visible face and you need to hit run. Once I have my character design, which I feel happy about, then as always, I'm going into the consistent character tool on Replicate. I'm using this tool very frequently, and honestly, I cannot see much of an alternative for this tool. One important reminder that once you have these images, I highly recommend you to upscale them using Magnific. But remember that Clink doesn't work with images. Clink actually requires videos. Therefore, we still need to create videos from these images. For producing videos from these images, you can use Kling or Runway or whatever tool you think would be a nice fit. I think Kling and Runway keeps the face consistency best. And you can, of course, use Minimax as well, but Minimax, I think, is great for action shots and motion. It doesn't do the best job with keeping the face consistency at highest level. And then we will feed those videos here for training. However, I want to show you an alternative method, probably something a little bit more easier. If you go to free pick, you will realize that there is a new character creation option. If you hit new character, you can train a custom LoRa inside the free pick just using images. And then you can create images with your character. If you still prefer to use Clink, then it's much easier to create training data for Clink using free pick because you have this direct option from images to videos, we will create a character. We name our character as Ebru. We will choose the gender. We want high quality. I uploaded my images and I will hit create character. So training doesn't take so long. It's very fast. So then creating some images by this method is very easy. I wrote cinematic photo and then you type at Ebru, the character's name you just trained. You describe the setup. 
And I would recommend you to use Mystic 2.5 for creating these images because it already generates 2K resolution images, meaning that most likely once you generate these images, you don't need upscaling those images. You can, of course, alternatively choose Flux tools as well. If you use Flux 1.1, it has high resolution. I still like to use Mystic 2.5 because it generates realistic cinematic looking images with your character. And in most of the film you saw, I actually use this method. I created first the images and then I feed these images to Clink and Runway to generate that film. So it's very efficient, quick option here. Once you have your images with your characters, you can switch to video mode. You click on start image, choose the image you would like to use in your video, click on use image. It automatically generates the prompt describing the scene. And here you can choose alternative video models. At the moment, we have access to Runway, Luma, Mochi, and Minimax. And Clink 1.5 is coming here as well very soon. As you can see, using this method, it's very easy to generate videos with your character's face. Let's go back to Clink AI process. Using FreePip workflow, I generated 16 videos of my character from different perspectives and different expressions and medium shot and close-ups, etc. We go back to Clink and we hit click and drop. In the first part, we will upload a single frontal face video. And then I decided to upload this one because you need the character to be directly looking at the camera. The face should be in like a frontal position. Okay, and we got thumbs up from Clink that this video is perfectly matching their requirements here. For next step, Clink asks us to upload videos of the same character with different expressions from different angles, doing different kinds of actions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit upload videos. I will upload all the videos I created using free pick. And you will realize that Kling will just reject some of the videos I uploaded, saying that it's not the same character. So it needs to perfectly match to the original video you upload. So I fixed that and I uploaded videos who perfectly match to the original video. In order to start training, you need minimum 10 videos, but I actually recommend you to upload much more because the results will get much more consistent if you upload more videos. And once you hit train, we will end up with this training screen. And training for me took around 40 minutes. And once the training is done, on clean, go to text to video mode and choose face reference as your character from the drop down here. And here you can create also new face model. Once you're in text to video mode, you can choose your character, which you recently trained from face reference. And once you choose that, it will add your character's name here. I would highly recommend you to add some cues here, because if you don't add here, for example, I described the hairstyle and color. If you don't have enough training videos, mainly the hairstyle won't fit. And when it comes to face consistency, I would say it comes very close to the images I created. It's not really perfect. I think there is a bit of a slight difference in the face. And I think this is not because of Clink, but it's due to the training data that I provided. 10 videos, most likely not sufficient for perfect match. I would recommend you to double that to 20. Then you will get much more consistent results. So you may think that, wow, this is a really long process. And if it's really worth it, being completely honest with you, I think it's a good advantage to have. Just mention your character's name as a reference and then describe the scene and then you have directly a video. But training part of this model, it takes a lot of time and it's a long process and you need to use multiple tools. I think this workflow would work better if you are using your own face. But when it comes to creating a character and creating scenes with your designed character, I would recommend you to use FreePick instead of this workflow because it's much more direct. It's much more quicker to train a LoRa on FreePick and it's easier to create scenes, the images with your trained character. Tap your character and it's already here and you describe your scene and then it generates the image. And from this image, you have also the possibility to go to the video mode on FreePick. So for Kling, I wish it would be possible to train a character LoRa using just images, not on the video. A third alternative you can use is the training Flux LoRa model on Fall.ai. And they recently released a new Flux portrait trainer. On the screen, I'm showing you three videos of a character consistency comparison. The first one is created using Kling AI's custom model. Second one 
is created with FreePix character mode. And for image, I use Mystic version 2.5. And for video, I use Runway. And the last one is generated using file.ai characters training. And for video part, I use Runway. I think it depends on your preferred workflow. If you have already a subscription on Clink, most likely you may want to stick with custom model on Clink. If you already have subscription on FreePick, I think it makes sense to use FreePick. The next thing I want to show you is virtual try-on. This option you will find on the left side again allows you to change your character's outfit and it's a very cool feature. We click on virtual try-on and we choose the second tab here. Then we have the option to upload a garment image and upload the model's image. Then Clink basically will take the image of outfit you uploaded and put it on to the characters as, a, as an outfit. I created this Christmas outfit with the prompt photo of a Christmas outfit, single garment with intricate details, white background. And I uploaded my model's image here, hit generate. And then here's my character is wearing a Christmas outfit. Now I will create a video from this image. We are selecting bring to life. And then this opens up image to video mode. I wrote happy woman is walking, a simple prompt and I hit generate. So our video is ready and our character is wearing the outfit we picked for her. Okay, next thing I want to show you is a tool called Play AI. So Play AI allows you to create natural sounding dialogues. This tool is completely free. So in the beginning of the film, probably you heard that two characters, two cops were talking about the situation. And this was also like introduction of the storyline and my characters. When you select playground, uh, you have two options. You can either do narration with one speaker or you can have conversation with two speakers. Once you choose conversation, you can change the speaker's voices. You have many pre-built options. It's not possible to upload specific sounds at the moment, but you can choose from pre-created voices. You can hear the voice samples with play button. Hey, how's it, how's going? it going? I appreciate you giving me a call. Oh, how's it going? Who clicked on my voice? There are many options that you can choose from. And once you decide on the voice options, you can create the whole film dialogue using these labels here. So simply you write speaker one, you write the sentence. After putting the speaker two label, you write the next sentence. And it's very easy to create this dialogue. Then you hit generate speech. All right. So um, instead of our regularly scheduled programming, uh, there's something hairier that came across my feed last night that I just need to discuss. Wait, where's this going? <laughs> I, uh, I just thought we'd take a little detour. You know, take the scenic route down the path of mystery, specifically into the thick mossy woods where something like, oh, I don't know. Bigfoot himself. So you got the point. It's like very natural sounding dialogue and it creates literally in seconds. Very helpful. I also want to show you a quick comparison of lip syncing option on Clink. Um, in the film, I used lip syncing option of Clink AI and I'm really helpful. I think it's a decent quality lip syncing. And here you can see the sample. He rented one and they tracked the paperwork. Apparently, he's been sailing his whole life. The cool thing about Clink AI lip syncing is it's a dynamic scene where you have cars passing by on the background and it's a dynamic scene. The Runway Act 1, which is using actually the real face tracking for lip syncing, is very strong. But main issue with Runway Act 1 is normally the scenery behind the character is very static. One hint that I can give you to make the scenery more dynamic is once you generate your Act 1 lip sync, let's say in 9 to 16 format, if you expand the shot, it will create a dynamic scene. I'm serious. I'm serious. You can see it dynamism to the scene. And of course, it's not perfect, but by this way, you can create some dynamism. And one thing to remind you that once you click on lip syncing, you are able to upload your local voice sample. When you upload your audio file, sometimes it gives error saying that your audio contains sensitive content. It's some kind of bug or glitch on Clink. When you get this error, just re-upload it and it will accept eventually. And it does five seconds lip syncing, whereas Runway Act 1 is, can actually make 20 seconds long lip sync. 
the last thing I want to show you is repurposing your video files for different platforms like Instagram or YouTube Shorts. So in order to do that, you come to expand video and you need to switch to Gen3 Alpha Turbo mode because it only works with Turbo at the moment. I'm sure this will come to Gen3 Alpha as well. So whole purpose of this is, let's say you have a video in 16 to 9 format, and this option allows you to transform it into a vertical format using AI, and it fills and expands the scene using generative AI. So you need to select your video, and I selected this one. This is a 9 to 16 shot. You can add a prompt if you want to describe the scenery and prompt the model that however you want this scene to be filled or you can just keep it empty and it will create this shot. You can expand this video again if you want, transform it into 9 to 16 again. For that, you come to this drop down here and click on expand video. You can write an optional prompt, it's up to you and we hit generate. And this is how you can expand and repurpose your videos. Hopefully this video was truly helpful for you. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials. If you want to learn more about art intelligence, click here.